Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for June 2nd, 2023. Well, yesterday we had a little bit of bullish price action coming in after some initial selling, and then we had a really big shot of selling right at the end of the day, but it didn't change the charts all that much. Um, we have we had the uncertainty about the debt ceiling deal and in uh, the Senate, but the Senate got its work done last night, um, passed the debt ceiling deal. So no worries about that. And, and we've got markets around the world celebrating that this morning. Um, Asian markets were up sharply overnight. European markets are up sharply this morning and we've got U.S. futures looking for some bullish open here this morning ahead of some economic data. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Friday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. So good morning once again everyone and thank you so much for being here i do truly appreciate it hey just before we get started here i want to let you guys know that next week could be a little bit different in uh, the way uh, it looks and sounds i fully intend to do morning market prep videos uh, to give you guys a an idea what of what's happening i am actually moving into a dorm room if you can believe that I'll be 61 this summer and I'm moving into a dorm room for a week uh, taking a class with a very famous wood carver. For those who don't know, I'm kind of an aspiring wood carver and um, get an opportunity with just uh, seven other folks um, a, a full week with a very famous wood carver to learn from. So I will be... Um, pretty busy uh, next week. As a matter of fact, I move into the dorm on Saturday and I believe I will have all the internet access and things I need to create the video, but I don't know that for sure. So uh, kind of keep that in mind. But um, I'm going to do my best to continue to make that happen um, from, uh, from the college room. Um, if at all possible. So keep an eye out for that. It's going to sound a little bit different. It may be just a little bit different than normal. So just thought I would let you know that. Let's take a look at these charts and see if we can gain some information about how we might want to approach the market for today. Well, as you can see, we that rally yesterday um, left us with a nice bullish candle here, bullish engulfing candle, as a matter of fact on that move but it failed to break that downtrend here in the chart this morning we're going to gap above that move and you can see gapping above that move is is a great thing and i will not turn this green again until we kind of prove that we're going to follow through off of that level to the upside and just like i didn't turn this red until we kind of failed um, that line right there so I'll be watching that closely now if we take a look at the technicals here in the chart notice that we'll be gapping right up into kind of this moving average this bearish moving average squeeze at the moment 50-day moving average is still above notice we've got a 34 and 20 EMA down below that and then above that level is our 500 day moving average so watch that area right in here we could run into some price resistance the good news here is we held at the 200 day moving average so perhaps everything is going to be bullish from here but one thing that is a little bit on the sad side for me um, and that is just the fact that we're going to be right back in this chop zone notice how long how much of our price action since all the way back here in December has been stuck in this range and we're going to be right back up here in that range once again. Um, so whether or not we'll have enough momentum to push on through, um, remember we still have this downtrend here that we've got to uh, do something with as well that will serve as resistance in the chart. 
Now, if the bulls continue to find inspiration today and they break on through that 50 day moving average, I'm gonna look right up in here uh, for some of these resistance levels. Notice we've got some fairly substantial price resistance levels right across here. If they can push on through that, well, where are we going to go? I think we're gonna go right back up here and retest that level right there and see whether or not we're gonna be able to break out of that little uh, downtrend right here in the chart. So watch that closely here on the diamonds. Remember what we did do last time is we, we put in a lower high followed by a lower low. That runs us into that risk that we could find another lower high and followed by a lower low. That's how trends are made. So watch that closely. If we take a look at our uh, S&P 500, very different situation here with a uh, handful of tech um, stocks. I, I saw there was a story out there from Jim Cramer. He's calling them the Magnificent Seven. Um, they are, uh, you know, your big tech giants doing the majority of the lifting in the market. They are the runaway favorite right now. And oh my gosh, we're pushing the PE ratios on those companies to extreme levels. Um, but no one seems to, no one seems to mind. So uh, on the SPY, we had this um, nice little morning star pattern here show up yesterday with that nice bullishness. Again, it was mostly the tech giants that did the big part of the lifting here, but that is a bullish pattern holding off of this bullish um, upside trend. So you gotta give that to the bulls and they're gapping higher here this morning. So where do we go from here? Well, if those bulls continue to find that inspiration, Let's look across over here. You can see we've got some resistance starting to show up about right in there on that chart, right across the S&P 500 chart. So watch that closely, that area. If we can pop through there, I'm gonna suggest we might go back up into this area. If the bears find inspiration today, well, uh, I think it's fairly easy to see about the only thing we could um, uh, potentially expect is a little bit of a pullback. We could pull back into this area of support or we could pull all the way back into this area of support and still remain bullish on the S&P 500. If we take a look at our QQQ chart, QQQ chart is the most overextended index um, in the market and we continue to stretch this to the upside. Again, kind of a morning star pattern showing up up here. That's a continuation pattern for a potential upside move and you can see us gapping up this morning trying to break through um, that recent resistance high. So as we look across over here, where's our next resistance in the chart? You can see we've broken through this area here and we're up here testing this area of the chart. There's some fairly decent um, resistance in this area. But keep in mind, if we can pop through that, I think the resistance above comes right up in here, right around where I've got that red line. If we push up into here, um, we'll be threatening um, those breakouts here in um, these big levels of resistance in the chart. If the bears find inspiration, very much the same thing as I said on the SPY. Maybe we pull back and we test the support area in the chart. Uh, there would be no harm, no foul if they did that. Technically in these charts, these are um, SPY and QQQ are very bullish. The only thing I do caution folks on is when we have a separation this far between uh, price and the 50 day moving average, that can create some pretty substantial pullbacks or consolidations in the market. Let's take a look at our IWM. Now IWM has really struggled for a long time. Once again, we've been stuck in a range here forever. The good news on this chart is that um, we, we're bouncing back above our 50 day moving average in that chart. We still have our 200 day moving average below. Um, this right in here provides us a little bit of a moving average squeeze in that chart. And if I'm gonna go back to my uh, naked chart here and you can see we've got this upside trend that may be trying to hold. It's very shallow but trying to hold. So if those bulls continue to find inspiration today, where could we go? And I think that resistance level right up in here is fairly substantial. If we can break through that substantial resistance, then we're right back up here 
testing this resistance area in the chart. If the bears were to find inspiration today, then I think we've got that opportunity that we pull back and once again test support down in this area. So watch that closely. We're just right back into this chop zone. Let's see if we can finally develop some momentum here in the market and maybe break some of these ranges, whether we go up or down. Let's just get out of these ranges. If we take a look at our um, VIX, as I suggested yesterday, if the bulls find inspiration, we could drop down and retest this level. Now, as we were testing these low levels in the chart, um, I do have to continue to mention that possibility that we're running into some complacency here in the market. Now, we could go quite a bit lower, as you can see, and get very, very complacent, but we're in a very different market than we were um, in you know 2019 and 2017 so be kind of careful here um, with thinking that the all clear has been sounded because there if you've been looking at the economic data that's been coming out this week it's not been good and um, there are certainly um, some challenges ahead of us here in the market but that being said breaking down through this price support level of the chart i would suggest that the next level that we're going to go to is testing this down in here we could gap right down into here i think early this morning on the gap up in the market so the bulls in control let's push that down if the bears were to come back well maybe a retest back up into here um, would be appropriate and if that were to break well we know where those next levels are here in the VIX no fear in this market despite the the horrible PMI the horrible manufacturing uh, the decline that we're seeing in um, in um, housing markets um, none of it seems to bother the market at all as long as they can buy something in big tech let's take a look at our uh, T2122 T2122, if we look right in here, um, broke back above their 50% area here in T2122. You'll remember just yesterday we were down here um, early in the day testing the bearish um, uh, reversal zone. So we're up here toward the middle of the range now with the big gap up that we've got going this morning. We're going to watch this up here. I think we could really quickly be up here in the bearish reversal zone. So watch that close as we gap up and stretch here today. Um, but then keeping in mind, we still have this opportunity that we can move right back down here in T2122. And we've got some economic data that could stand in the way of us progressing to the upside. It's possible. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but it's possible. So just make sure you realize we're kind of in the middle of the range here. Um, if we take a look at our T2107, or excuse me, T2108. This was a little bit disappointing yesterday with uh, as much rally as we showed in the market. Um, I want you to notice that only 37% of the stocks made it above its 40 day moving average. So we didn't really resolve anything here on the internals of the market. And what that means is, is that the rally that we saw was pretty contained into a select few stocks. Now, looking across here, we've got a, a, a an area of support that we're holding, which is a good sign, and that that is good for the bulls in here. And with a gap up this morning, maybe we we've, we've relieved enough uncertainty pressure uh, by passing the debt ceiling that all is going to be fine here, and we could rally up and maybe break through this wedging pattern that we've been in for so long. Um, so let's watch that this morning as we surge to the upside. Will we break through this area up here or will this area continue to serve as resistance in the chart? It's pretty hard to be uber bullish here with only 37% of the stocks holding above their 40 day, however. If we take a look at T2107, here's another internal that improved yesterday. We came up to 34, or excuse me, 38 to 30, 38 and a half percent of the stocks above their 200 day moving average. But doggone it, um, we still run into this uh, downtrend issue here in the chart. So we really didn't resolve anything with that rally yesterday. We certainly got the impression that everything was, oh my gosh, all kinds of bullishness. 
but maybe not so much. We're stuck in this uh, wedging pattern. Now today we could break that range and maybe we'll press up in here and test some of these resistance levels to see if we can break through. I will want to continue to point out this uh, pretty nasty looking head and shoulders pattern. So um, again, 38.5% of the stocks above their 200 day moving average. Really tough to look at that and say, man, we are so bullish. It's unbelievable. I should buy with both hands. So be kind of careful here. If we take a look at our T2101, T2101 once again whips on a little bit yesterday, um, hooking over to the downside, showing that maybe a momentum shift to the upside. We've kind of been running in that momentum to the downside, not strong momentum by any means. Um, and then yesterday's rally giving us that momentum shift. So we would need to see this follow through with that momentum to the upside here today in T2101 and get that breadth going a little bit more. If we were to take a look at our um, economic calendar for today, our biggest hang up for today is going to be on that economic calendar. Um, looking right here, we've got the employment situation number uh, coming in. Now, let's keep in mind, we missed big time on the ADP number here. We missed on the jobless claims number. Um, so that's going to be important um, to be watching this number here on the employment situation. Right now, they're expecting 190,000 um, in non-farm uh, non or payrolls coming in, non-farm payrolls. Um, if that were to miss, of course, that could be a disappointment for the market and also um, you know, possibly re-engage the Fed. Um, a few of the Fed members have saying a pause in June coming up. That's been giving a little bit of relief here um, to the market. But if we continue to see these data points that don't support um, them uh, doing that, there's going to be that worry that they could shift and, and flip back over into more of a hawkish stance. So watch that carefully. After that, Baker Hughes rig count. We've got the motor vehicle sales numbers here. Unlikely to move the market here at all on that. Um, if we take a look at our earnings calendar today, well, there's only four companies on the earnings calendar. Um, they are all super, super small cap. Uh, most of them are trading in the uh, below $1 range. <laughs> so uh, no notable earnings for today to provide some inspiration. Um, we're all, it's all gonna be on the back of uh, the excitement here this morning will be on the back of the debt ceiling uh, being raised and whether or not we can push on through some of these other uncertainties in the market. Let's take a peek at some stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me this quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, if you could also do me that favor, and that would be click those thumbs up buttons, leave that brief comment. It helps the channel to continue to grow. Thank you so much to everyone who does do that honestly you guys humble me every day certainly i get criticism about the videos uh, you know just like everyone else uh, I, i'm not a professional speaker by any means uh, i'm just a trader doing a job of a trader and sharing this information with folks out there and, and if i wasn't sharing this information with uh, with all of you, I'd still be doing it for myself because this has been one of the keys to my success in the market is trying to look at charts without bias, without trying to predict and seeing if they're giving me information on how I can improve my odds in trading. And that's been very, very successful for me for more than 30 years of trading in the market. Let's take a look at some stocks here that could be setting up for today. And please keep in mind, guys, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. As a matter of fact, you're going to have to do your own due diligence. Be very, very careful here in this market. Remember, Fridays sometimes can be really exuberant. You know, everybody heading into the weekend. And we had the news today that uh, 
or last night that uh, makes that exuberance maybe uh, fire up a little bit more depending on whether that jobs number uh, tamps that down or not. Let's take a look at some stocks that I think are looking good, but um, you've got to be very, very careful and not over trade this market because I still think there are some pitfalls that could come our way. Um, it's it, We're not in a situation where I would say we're an all clear and we have a, a, a NASDAQ that's been leading the way, but also very overextended. Let's take a look at some of these stocks. First off, I think you might want to be taking a peek at some of the big techs. They have just extended and extended and extended. And even though they just continue to rip to the upside, I would be really careful and I would be thinking about the possibility of finding some uh, potential short positions on these because they, as they just continue to stretch, we're getting a little bit carried away in the parabolic moves of these charts. So maybe some bear call credit spreads, something along those lines, looking for a little rest or consolidation coming into those charts at any time. Remember, summer is typically a slow period of the market and it tends to be one of the slowest periods for the NASDAQ. So watch that carefully. Um, other places that you might look, you know, we've got um, this weekend, we've got an OPEC report and boy, um, oil has been all over the place here. Shot up yesterday. If you want to speculate a little bit on oil, um, an OPEC report, then start looking at charts that have pretty good opportunities. Take a look at PBR here. Big resistance level in the chart. Nice move up yesterday. That possibility of that upside move following through. So if you wanted to speculate that um, uh, production cuts and things like that could come for, um, from OPEC, that might push these stocks on higher. So watch that pop through a little rest or pullback would set up a really beautiful opportunity in that chart. So we did see stocks like Exxon Mobil things starting to pop back up off of these lows. I wouldn't call this, um, you know, ready for prime time here by any means because we still are fighting in this downtrend. But if we can start breaking through some of those downtrends and holding higher lows, then we've got some pretty good opportunities in those charts. Certainly you could speculate on something like this in, you know, possibly with this big support area with a bull put credit spread. By the way, guys, um, we've been utilizing credit spreads, um, ratio spreads and things like that and right way options and had a lot of success with them over the last couple of years in this volatility. So if you don't understand those, um, Take a look at some of the videos that they ha I have on the YouTube channel to um, help you get um, some information on that. And then, of course, you can always come over and take a trial with Rightway Options, and we'd love to. I'd love to answer all those questions for you and help you get started on that path. Let's take a look at some other stocks in here that could be of interest. Um, AMD has certainly been a darling of the market here recently since the collaboration. Uh, coming in was was mentioned uh, with AMD and shooting up here and this pullback right in here could set up that opportunity for a, uh, for a continued upside move. I would be a little bit cautious and careful here not to over trade this because I think there is that possibility that we're a bit over parabolic and we could easily suck the buyers in here for just um, a day or two and then we continue to pull this on back and consolidate. So just watch that closely. Um, more like a pattern of this where we stretch up, we pull back a little bit, we get a few more in there, and then and then we see a longer um, uh, protracted pullback coming in that chart. So watch that carefully in AMD. Um, take a look at the airlines. Um, uh, airlines doing very, very well running up in upside trends. Um, Nice little consolidation move there on UAL. Be looking for some bulls to come into that chart to try and push that on through. You know, some of the defensive sector stocks have um, suffered some pretty recent punishment, but take a look at Constellation Brands. Constellation had a big breakout yesterday, 
pushing through some resistance in that chart. So any rest or pullback in here that holds onto that trend, I think sets up more upside opportunity in Constellation. Good strong dividend payer here as well. You might also want to take a look at the uranium space. Boy, um, you, 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 you um, shot up yesterday. Um, breaking through this little downtrend here, any rest or pullback would set up an opportunity, I think, in UUUU. CCJ was the winner of the day, just a rocket ship ride yesterday, breaking through some resistance levels in the chart. You can see we've got additional resistance levels up here to deal with, but now any rest consolidation pullback in here could set up that next opportunity to the upside. You might also want to take a look at um, URA, URA um, uranium ETF breaking through resistance here in the chart, looking for that upside move. Rest or pullback in there sets up an opportunity. Now I got to tell you, there could be a lot of volatility in some of these um, commodity type stocks. If we take a look at the US dollar here this morning, Look at the wild volatility that we saw in the U.S. dollar here overnight. And that was based on that uh, passage of the debt ceiling bill. Um, it really had massive fluctuations in price here on the dollar. So um, we have rallied really, really strongly and now pulling back. If we continue to see that pullback here in uh, the U.S. dollar, then watch that closely because that could inspire those uh, commodity stocks to move higher. So keep a close eye on that. We are seeing, I'm seeing gold pretty flat here this morning, but one thing that's been interesting in gold is even as the market has been uh, struggling and the dollar has been strengthening, gold has been pretty tenacious and holding in here. Now this could be the failure point. We could rally back to this resistance here in the chart. I hate to say this because um, I kind of want to see gold go higher, but um, looking at the chart, I have to look at that with my eyes wide open. This rally up here could see that failure and move on down and that establishes the downtrend in the chart. However, if we can break back through that resistance and hold up here, then we have the upside opportunity where we can push on through. So watch that close. We're right there at the cusp of a decision on gold. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you a wonderful, wonderful weekend with, you, with your family. Be careful, be safe, and I will see you right back here bright and early Monday morning. It may sound a little bit different. It may be a little bit different um, um, look and feel for the video, but I will be here if at all possible. Everyone take care, and I want to wish you all the best today.